Hi. So I was going to do some uh, USB testing for episode three, but I got a bit sidetracked here because I decided I wanted to get the SD card interface working. And as you've probably seen in the previous episodes, is um, ESP32 S3 USB OTG board it has got a built in SD card socket. And in fact, quite a few of the devices that I've got here, which we'll be looking at in the future, they all seem to have SD card sockets on them. And well, I thought to myself, how hard can that be? Just plug it in and get a library and it should work, right? Well, not so quick because for a start, remember I was telling you in episode two that I made up a, uh, a board definition for this device because there wasn't one available in platform IO and I have found out some information that I wasn't aware of before which is rather useful which I will share with you guys as well in any case on this particular website here which is the github site for um, expressive they have a uh, a thing, uh, a library called SD underline MMC. Now, apparently, with these SD cards, you can actually wire those directly onto your uh, ESP32 pins with some pull up resistors. I think it's 10K for most of them, or one I think needs a 1K resistor or something like that. Um, the information is available, but of course, in our case, the USB, there's the SD card interface. It has those pull up resistors already built in, 10K there. And in fact, it has some of uh, these devices over here, which are uh, protection devices for um, over voltage and static and things. I think they're like bi directional uh, xenodiodes or something. And there are some resistors over here which actually says zero so they they would actually act as their little fuses if anything ever goes wrong in any case a couple of things to note here that the that interface uses doesn't use spi it uses a a much faster interface but it has more pins it has data zero data one data two and data three and Data 3 also doubles as the command interface by the looks of it. And no, it doesn't. The command is here. And there's a clock and um, so on. So they're actually directly, and this is the sockets that the little plug, uh, the, the card plugs into. So they are, in fact, directly connected to those IO pins 33. 34, 35, 36, 37, and 38. And then, of course, we notice that in the table over here, they forgot to put 35 in there. It, 35 is missing over here, 36, 37, 38, 33, and 34. But uh, 35 obviously is a, an important pin as well. So in any case, They have information here on the pinouts of these little cards. Uh, there's different versions of them and where, where the pins are. And then here's a table, what, how these pins work. But we don't have to concern ourselves with that because uh, the socket is on the board already and it's connected, as you can see. It's got the pull-ups. Um, now, this is the board we have, ESP, you see, and it's... Um, tells us that um, 36 is clock, 35 is command, 37, 38, 33, 34. Now, when I first uh, put that library in place, I could not get it to work. This, there is actually a, the, a test file for that library available, an example, which I have loaded up. This is it here. 
we recognize that from that example. The only thing I had to add was uh, include Arduino.h. That wasn't there. And then I found out some interesting, like they had an ex example here, like if you want to override the actual clock pins, which in fact I don't have to do anymore, but in originally I had to try this, it was just failing. It came back with an error 109 and 107, and it says pins are not assigned, and all sorts of weird error messages. And um, it says ODF pull up resistors on, you know, <laughs> all sorts of error messages that, that didn't make any sense. So I started looking through the system to the, to the folders that are involved with um, platform IO and There, I found this folder over here. Um, it actually has platform IO packages and it has framework Arduino Expressive 32. And then underneath there, there is actually a whole bunch of um, variants and it's got all these boards over here. I didn't know about that and the information that um, I, I found no information on that on Expressives uh, or Platform IO's um, website. So in any case I found this uh, folder over here and it has files in there. When I looked at these files, uh, pins, Arduino.8s and variant CPP I've actually loaded them up here. Um, this is to do with the that it has that USB host power, so it's got uh, some actual code that actually is used as a uh, an adjunct in order to, to the uh, actual board class and. I must have a look at this. You know, once once we get to the USB stuff, I'm going to have a look at this because it looks like um, this might be useful. USB host power, probably you can set the mode instead of having to jiggle these pins yourself. Any case, but this is the most important, um, interesting, I should say. Uh, it's got pins. I do know that and each board has has one of these files, and <clears throat> I noticed before I had to override some pins and things. I realized there was something kind of not right in my board file. So I started looking at this. This has those codes in there, and it has all the all the pins that this particular board has defined. And you will find that the uh, CDSD MMC pins are over here 33, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8 and the LCD pins, the buttons, the LEDs, the um, USB down and up, that, that's the um, USB ports, D minus and D, D plus, these are pins are 19 and 20 and so on, everything is there. So then I realized that in your file you could actually access those values, you see, 36, 35 and so on. So the important thing is that you have to have core set to ESP32. I put a 32S3 in there before and then uh, weird things happened, it wouldn't compile properly. So this appears to be correct now. Um, this LD script, I tried to find that file. I can't. I cannot find a file on my system with that uh, file name, so I don't know what that's all about. But core needs to be ESP32, and you will have MCU is ESP32 S3, and the variant is ESP32 S3 USB OTG. 
and that is the important stuff and the rest doesn't ha didn't have to change like from this s3 dev kit for instance the core esp32 but they have an mcu esp32 s3 and a variant esp32 s3 and because this uh I tried to use that uh, dev kit board before with the lack of something and then uh, if you look at its um, pins they are completely different so that's why it was failing so that's an important thing to know so in any case it now works and before I try to actually run this on the uh, uh, in the Arduino IDE and it was working so that's how I kind of keyed in on the that you know some, something was lacking and that it was the pin definitions so I don't actually have to use these because what, what happens is over here if you've got the right variant loaded see I've got some comment here that if you want to change the pin assignments uh, apparently on some of them like there's an ESP32 WROOM board it has a, a little SD card in it and one of the pins is different so you can override it and also there is uh, several different modes there is also a, a test file that uses the uses ISP mode um, and it is actually quite slow and then this particular mode here you can use it in one pin mode in which case it only uses data zero that's also slow but uh, using it in the full mode with all the pins um, D, D1, D2 and D3 actually I, I experimented with that it should be like so um, then it is twice as fast I've noticed a bit more than twice as fast so I don't have to run this code now it'll just um, because it has the uh, pin file proper pins loaded and the library for the uh, SSD MMC actually uses the um, the right pins by default so didn't have to def define those therefore so now if I uh, compile it It is happy and if I upload it so success and now if I go to the serial monitor um, let's clear this out because it was a previous test I'll push the restart button start monitoring that would help wouldn't it so the test works as you can see it uh, read the card it says SDSSC it's actually a 2 gigabyte one um, I figured that for these uh, projects you know I'm going to load some data in there but it doesn't have to be it's not won't you be using a great deal of space um it uh listed the directory that uh, is from the root directory system it has a directory called system volume information a file test.txt and it created a directory my dir, it was created then it listed the uh, directories again volume information uh, that this is in the system volume uh, folder it's got a file there that is got WP settings that this is a, a, a Microsoft thing you know when you format your file on Microsoft computer you end up with that system volume information thing uh, then it wrote a file called hello.txt file written appending to file hello.txt message appending then it's reading the file 
and it read hello world from it. Uh, it deleted the file foo.txt, file deleted, renaming hello exe text to foo.txt, file renamed, reading file, foo.txt, read from file, it still says hello world. Um, and it wrote um, one megabyte in 901 milliseconds or something and it read 549. As I said, when I used the uh, one bit or the SPI, it was like over a thousand milliseconds to, to read it. So it is working and provided you got the right pin file loaded from that uh, board file, everything is sweet. Uh, this is the, the test code. I think what I'll do is I'm going to make my own library and I will put these functions in a separate CPP file and make a header file for it like I did with the uh, EFT display as well. You will see that later because we're definitely going to be using the SD cards. I've got a project in mind but you guys will see what it is when we get to it in a a couple of uh, three episodes away, I think. So this one lists directories, creates a directory, remove directory, read file, write file, append file, rename file, delete file, test file, IO, and setup code. Actually, everything is in setup, it only runs once, there is no loop code. Okay, so that's it. So next, definitely, we are going to be looking at the uh, USB ports. And I will see you guys later. Don't forget to uh, subscribe and um, get notified for when there are some new episodes available in this uh, series. I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.